we're going to start talking about some of the basics of Illustrator, your primary vector art software program. And uh, when we work with um, um, Illustrator, like all of the Adobe programs, first uh, let's talk about the fact that we have our main menu across the top of the page um, or our screen. And then right under that, we have a series of tools that are a part of what's called the options bar. And the options bar changes as we change uh, from one tool to another. The idea is that um, uh, the uh, options will change because they affect how the tool behaves or things that we might want to do in relationship to um, that particular tool. And so as we cycle through our different tools, then we are going to, in fact, see different things um, happen and change with respect uh, to the options bar. Um, we're going to start, first of all, uh, with the basic shape, what's called the rectangle shape. And the way Illustrator works is we create what's actually called anchor points. And the anchor points are connected by lines, are connected by lines, and that in fact creates a shape. And uh, we have uh, several tools. Um, I just went and, as you can see, made a rectangle. But also, um, one of the things is with all of our basic tools or most of the tools you'll notice this a little black triangle here in the corner and of each tool and that means there are other variations on that tool so here we can click and hold and we see that there's the rectangle and there's the circle and the polygon and even the star tool and so we can make different shapes okay um, and uh, so what I did was, in fact, I went to the rectangle tool and I simply clicked, held my mouse, and created this shape. Now, each shape in Illustrator has two f basic parts. One is the stroke or the line um, or the outline, if you will, around the shape that defines it. And that's, um, again, referred to as the outline or as the stroke. Then you have uh, the inside of the shape, which of course right now is just white, um, but we can add color and texture and do a lot of different kinds of things to change the appearance of the inner part of a shape. And that's referred to as the fill. So typically we have the fill and then we have the stroke. Okay. The stroke and the fill can be controlled separately. In other words, as you'll see, we can add thickness and color and um, a number of different tools that, that have custom borders and artistic kinds of textures on the stroke. And then, as I indicated, we can fill the inside of it with a distinctly different color or shape um, uh, a shade or texture of some kind, like a gradient and some other artistic kinds of things, as you'll see. But to control one or the other, we have to tell the computer that we want to do that. And so with the shape selected, we'll come back to it in a minute, and the black arrow, if you just created it, it would have been selected, but if not, we click on it with the arrow and that selects the shape. You can see the blue line and the little squares indicating that the shape is activated or selected. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom of my tools, my tool palette, and notice that there are two little shapes. One that's white and that is the fill tool. That's the fill tool. And then um, uh, next to it, or at this moment, uh, behind it, 
you see the little black it looks like a frame or a border. Well, that's the stroke tool. So we need to pick whichever one we want to tell the computer that's what we want to modify. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the white square, the fill. Okay. And then I'm going to go and get some color. And um, you may already, like I do, have um, the color swatch um, or the color box um, on your screen. Um, and or you may have the swatches. And we can activate any of these little tabs and tool boxes in a variety of ways. One is right over here, as you can see. Some of them are here with their little pictures, color guide. Here's the swatches. Okay. And um, uh, we'll come back. We have the stroke. And um, also, uh, if the tab isn't visible here, we can uh, select and get any of our little tab toolboxes or toolbars from up under window in the main menu. So here I can get color. And here I can get the swatches. So I'll bring that up. And here it is. So with my uh, shape selected, um, with uh, having told the, the tools here that I want to uh, change or edit the fill, I'll now pick a color. And there you see it. It fills the shape. And I can pick a different color. It really doesn't matter. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a stroke on the, this shape so that it is visible. So again, I go down to the bottom of my tool, uh, tool tools and click on that little border, the stroke tool. And now I will come again back here to the color guide or the swatches. And I will pick a color. And then I can add thickness. I can add thickness um, to it, uh, the stroke. First off, I can again activate that from right over here. Here's the stroke tool. Looks like a little series of lines. And I click that, and here it is. Um, I could once again have gone up under window and pulled up the uh, stroke box. Okay. And um, we can even look at the uh, fact that uh, I currently, because I'm uh, using the black arrow, the stroke is visible up here in the options bar. So here's three different places where I can change it. And by increasing the number, one point is like a ballpoint pen, about that thickness and um, we can make it thicker in any of these places and there you can see very clearly the, um, the line or stroke is visible around the shape. And so once again we have the fill which is yellow and we have the stroke which is the heavy blue line around the edge. One other quick thing that uh, before we stop, if I already, when we started, I already had a page here, and uh, but I want to remind you, as with all software programs, file new will mean create a new document, and in this we can pick, um, of course, we can name it, we can pick the standard, uh, one of the standard size uh, pieces of paper. We can pick whether we want it vertical or horizontal. And we'll be talking more about color models. For um, multimedia, we would pick RGB. For print, we would pick CMYK. And we don't use raster effects much here in um, Illustrator. Um, but if we do, we would generally pick high um, if that's visible. I can get rid of some of those by clicking um, this little arrow right here. You see those things collapse. And here's the basics, the size of the paper and the orientation of it. And we, um, we'll just stop right there, okay?